is not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven for many other tons on the way. It's not an easy road, but the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. No, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks beside me and bright is the journey and light is every heavy load. It's not an easy road. There are trials and troubles for many are the dangers we meet. But Jesus guides and keeps us that nothing can harm us and smooth the rough path for our own feet. No, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks beside me and brightens the journey and lightens every heavy load. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity, both now and forevermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this day we shall talk on the theme, Trust God, even when everything is going against you. I repeat it again. Trust God, even when everything is going against you. Observations have shown us that the harder the life, the stronger one will become. And every successful person has a humble beginning as well as a painful story. And every painful story always has a successful ending. So, we have to accept the pains and get ready for success. Remember this, no matter how long the night is, the day is sure to come. Hope in God in your situations. Second Chronicle chapter 15 verse 7 says, Do not quit. Be courageous, for God has not forgotten you. He will reward you very soon. In your agony, simply run to God. Jabez is a perfect example as we have seen in First Chronicle chapter 4 verse 10. That is the prayer of Jabez. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. The very first thing scripture tells us about Jabez is that he cried to the God of Israel. Jabez states God's lordship and headship over his life. So, when you pray, begin by acknowledging who God is. He, he says that you would bless me. Here, Jabez not only recognizes God as the one and only true God, he also acknowledges that blessings come only from God. Are you chasing broken promises and blessings that the world tries to entice you with? Are you striving towards prosperity on your own strength? 
When you pray, do it in a heart fully invested in the blessings of God. He went on, that you would multiply my territory. Here, many think that Jabez is simply referring to the physical land when asking to multiply his territory. However, if we look at the lineage of Jabez, he can only understand that he is not merely speaking in terms of wealth and prosperity, but in terms of impacting the kingdom of God. He wanted his spiritual territory to increase, to claim generations for the Lord of Israel. Do you need to claim or reclaim some of the land Satan has taken from you? Of course, when you pray, ask God to multiply your territory and to do more through you. He, he prays that your hand would be with me. Also, Jabez wanted God to be in every moment of his life. He understood the power of God's hand to protect and to lead in the right direction. Blessings will become causes if it is not God's hand providing and guiding. When you pray, request more than blessings and provisions, but that God's hand will lead you through any circumstances and trials that come your way. In fact, that is the greatest blessing. Jabez went on, Lord, keep me from harm that I will be free from my pain. Look at this name. The name Jabez literally means born with pain. His own mother named him this because of the pain she endured in labor. When Jabez prays, he speaks against the testimony of his name and let go of the shame it covered him in. So, when you pray, come to God vulnerable and ready for him to turn your weakness into his glory. Let us now see this true situation analysis of life. True situation analysis of life. Just imagine, after secondary school, all your classmates have gone in different directions in the world. Some have completed universities and are now doctors, engineers, teachers, pilots. Some are lawyers, some are even administrators, and what have you. Some are married, some have given birth, some are still searching and waiting on the Lord. Some are dead, don't forget that too. And others are on the sick bed. Some are running their higher degrees. Some are doing their masters. Some PhD, etc. Some have not even gained admission into the tertiary institution and may never be able to. Some own companies. Some are now directors and major shareholders in global companies. But how do you feel when you meet your classmates and it seems like most of them have accompanied their dreams and you are not yet close to yours? So many thoughts will run through your mind, right? Of course. First, you think God has not been fair to you. How about the ones you meet on the street wearing dirty clothes and still struggling for survival? Do you get the same thoughts running through your mind? I guess no. Don't forget too that some are already dead. Somehow, it feels natural to have that feeling of jealousy for those to those mates of yours who seem better off but it is really unnecessary. There is no room for regrets. We are all different and our paths to greatness are also not the same in distance. Some might have arrived earlier before you and some after you. But whatever level you find yourself in life, please, please and please keep trying to break limitations 
and move further. Celebrate the success of others is an indication that yours too will surely can. Your friend buys a car now, be happy with him or her. Remember, when you will buy yours, theirs might not be the latest again. There is no permanent champion but current champion. Life is not all about competition. Do not be in a race with anyone. Remember this. We may seem to be reading the same book, but different chapters at different times. Don't let the, the, the passion in you kill the desire in you. I take it again. Don't let the passion in you kill the desire in you. Keep it burning. What you are passing through today, write it down. Because one day, the world will be ready to read it. They will become part of your success story. There is no height you cannot attain. Believe in yourself. Define your goals. Recognize distractions and don't stop striving. Spend the time teaching yourself because the, those things that mainly take people to the top of to the top are the things they devote their time to develop. Don't be intimidated by your friend's sources. The sky is wide enough for birds of the earth to fly without touching one another. Value everything that God brings into your life. Love God and obey Him. For with God, all things are possible. Be reminded also that every king was once a crying baby, as well as every principal was once a poor peer. And every building you are seeing today, even all these magnificent buildings we are seeing today, they were once a picture in the mind. The person you attended his or her wedding was once a chief bachelor or spinster. So, why worry in life? It's not all about where you are today, but where you will reach tomorrow. Just let us consider this alphabet, alphabet O, which for many stands for opportunity. That word or letter O or alphabet O, it is absent in the world yesterday, but it is only once in the world today. But three things in the world tomorrow. Therefore, therefore, stay positive always and have hope. The future is bright. Just hope in God. Reflection on the life of Job. There are times when you receive your appointment or transfer letter and everyone begins to congratulate you as if you won a lottery. There are other times that such letters come, come and people feel sorry for you as if you lost a loved one. I feel moved after reading an interaction between God and Job. In life, Many, th many think that when you are good, your life will be perfect. Similarly, when you are evil, evil will surely be for you always. But now, the first shocker I got from a lecture about the life of Job was that the story was written so that people can know that evil can also be for one who is good and righteous. Favor comes from God and not from any man. Whoever God has blessed, no man can cause. Life is not all about money or comfort or fame. One can enjoy life more when there is a balance between enjoyment and suffering. I take it again. One can enjoy life more when there is a balance between enjoyment and suffering. 
Never let anyone make you feel good or bad about your situation. Watch the kinds of the kind of friends and people you keep around you. Job's wife and friends pushed him to feel that he is under punishment from God. This led him to challenge and question God. But remember that wherever situation you find yourself now, God is away. Hand your situation over to him. He knows everything. Stop complaining away your grace. I repeat, stop complaining away your grace. How often do you complain over what you are passing through? Look at our Lord Jesus Christ. He was insulted as well as wounded. He was crucified and pierced with a lance for our sake. But he didn't even utter a word. Nothing is impossible before him, but he kept quiet just to save you and to restore to you the joy of your salvation and to bring you out of darkness to light. He didn't complain, rather he cried to his father, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Brethren, just stop complaining, but learn how to cry to God, your Father. Complaining makes you depressed and feel hated. It even opens up. To, it opens you up to the enemies who, like Job's wife and his friends, we urge you to curse God. Don't try God. Don't try that. Only ask God for His grace. Find a way to discover God in the midst of storms of life. In the paragraph of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23 and 24, has it thus, As Jesus got into the boat with his disciples, suddenly a storm broke over the lake, so, so violent that the boat was being swamped by the waves but he was asleep yes that jesus was in the boat and there was this violent storm shows that the presence of sufferings and storms in life do not mean that jesus is no more present he was present and asleep but being asleep did not mean he was no longer in control of the situation he was and will forever be the Lord. All these show that our sufferings and storms do not mean that Jesus has left us. Rather, in those situations, he is even more attentive and more concerned. Hence, in the, in the world, you will have hardship. But I am telling you, be courageous. When God says, do not be afraid in the midst of storms of life, the reliance is never on yourself, or on your finance, or in your background, or in your connections, but only on God. This is because all these things can fail, but God is too faithful that he can never fail you. When he says, do not be afraid, it is because he knows there is light at the end of the tunnel. That is God for you. Just walk by faith and not by sight. There will be joy in the morning. Confer 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. From the traditions of the church, we learned that after, the, after Pilate condemned Jesus at the demands of the people, they dressed him in a scarlet robe and a gown of thorns. They led him to the crucifixion site outside the city. He was so weakened by his beatings that he could not even carry the cross again. He fell severally, but each time he rose up until he reached the appointed place. 
This was possible because he has already committed his spirit to the Father who was the source of his strength. Of course, life is full of ups and downs, but the downfall of a man is not his end. Do not accept a defeat in life, but be optimistic, believing at each fall that you can still make it because Jesus made it. The scripture says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Do consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Hebrews chapter 12, 2 and 3. Do not be discouraged that you have suffered much. God is not much concerned about your failures, but he is interested in your efforts to rise. His words should give you the confidence that he is interested in your rising up. He says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Confer the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19. There are certain things that you hide from friends and family members. You feel ashamed to reveal everything to them. But God remains the only person that you can truly open your heart to. For he knows everything and there is no reason to hide anything from him. That is why I have this as my favorite song. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that we're known. I have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that we know. I have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. My brothers and sisters in Christ, when we go again in the book of First Samuel, chapter 1, from verse 1 through 15, and even chapter 2, we see Hannah, who poured her heart to the Lord when she was provoked by Penina, her rival, because of her barrenness. She told the Lord to remember her and to look on her afflictions. The Lord was gracious and remembered her. What about David? David was also a good example of someone who poured out his heart to God. In fact, the book of Psalms is filled with David's prayers. He learned to go to the Lord in times of distress, for no one else could relieve him from his distress. Yes, you have to pour your heart to God, because God hears. He knows. He cares. I am telling you, God's timing is, is, is fat. It is perfect. And he can change every situation. He sees whatever you are going through. That is God for you. Child of God, have you prayed to God concerning your situation? Yet, they seem to go unanswered. I am now telling you, keep reminding God of your desires. 
I mean, please keep reminding God of your desires. Do not allow the lack of swift action to discourage you. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, it says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Remember this. The temptations of Jesus are seen in the Synoptic Gospels, but I take Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 11 as example. This is an indication that as far as Jesus is tempted by the devil, you are not an exception. You too must be tested. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. What a wonderful God! My brothers and sisters in Christ, life is full of ups and downs, and only the brave ones make it at the end. It is not yet over in that situation you find yourself until God says so. That is why God says in the Gospel of John chapter 14 from verse 1 through 3, Let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it is not so, would I have told you that I will go to prepare a place for you? And I will come again to take you with me, so that where I am, you also may be. Remember, in Genesis chapter 40, 41, from verse 41 to 44, Joseph was sold by his brothers and later thrown into the prison. Yet he did not lose hope until he became a governor in Egypt. In fact, Pharaoh made him his second in command. What is that situation that is making you restive? Do you think it is over with you when God has not even say, said so? Your own situation is not different. You can still make it, only that you must be patient with God, for God's time remains the best. God makes a way where there is no way. He makes the impossibility possible. In the Gospel of Matthew, and in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, from verse 46 through 52, the blind Bartimaeus did not allow the crowd to stop him because he believed it is not yet over with him. Therefore, child of God. You should not give up, no matter what life offers to you. Just believe in your heart without any iota of doubt that God lives. Permit me to submit this as I conclude. There will be no glory without the sufferings and pains, as there will be no crown without a cross. When you walk through many toys and adverse conditions with perseverance, the crown of glory will await you. What are those your pains and miseries? Is it persecutions? Is it accusations? Is it abandonment? Is it all about sickness? What about insults, barrenness, joblessness, hardship? Poverty? Is it rejections or any kind of tribulations? <laughs> I am telling you, do consider these things as opportunities to make heaven and even climb the pinnacle of your sources and not a sign of cost to life. They are temporal and momentary, not eternal. And when you accept them with enduring faith, and total resignation to God's will, your glory will appear. Let us pray. My great Redeemer, 
I sincerely ask you to give your children a nameless grace to stand firm in the moments of adversities. Fill us with peace and the ability to trust you. Give heed to the plights and supplications of your people and relieve us of our worries. Wipe away our tears and console us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.